assistant professor in State University of New York at Binghamton, New York. Uh, I'm from the United States and I work in machine learning and creating models um, that are relational, that care about um, predicting users or objects that are connected. And um, since our world has become connected um, itself uh, with IoT devices, users, social networks, and so on, uh, my um, models serve all these different kinds of data. Uh, there is a dimension of privacy, transparency, fairness, and also interpretability that I would like to add to my models. So this is the general overview of my research. Transparency to me is uh, being able to create machine learning models which offer a good explanation for why they're making certain predictions. Uh, I'm talking more from a machine learning point of view because I am a machine learning researcher. Uh, so. Uh, most of the machine learning models, uh, machine learning has become very popular, so many people use these models, and most of these models lack kind of explana explainability and interpretability. Um, they're more used as a black box, and we have seen at the conference as well, several people talked about it, um, that they are used constantly as a black box. So we want to be able to use these models to generate uh, predictions which are interpretable, which we can explain, and uh, my work, um, and I think that would help making these models and the data that these models use more transparent to the user. I think users definitely care about it um, in ways that they understand, because most users um, do not really understand the implications of privacy. So sometimes, and also the um, fairness and transparency is something that they should care about, but they have a limited understanding of what it means to be unfair and what it means to be not transparent. Uh, but I think that if you explain it to them, if they know the implications, they will understand it better and they'll care about it more. And as far as companies are concerned, uh, I think that so far, there's a great amount of emphasis on creating uh, models or machine learning approaches which have best prediction power, which has really good um, advantages in prediction at some expense of transparency, I would say. So, uh, but there has been some recent work and also I think the field as such is moving towards that, having more models which are transparent in nature, having um, more of an um, approach in which users are part of the equation and they understand the implications and then they are able to participate and make it better. So the last few years have seen machine learning grow uh, in many dimensions, such as big, huge models, which um, are able to take advantage of the computational advan um, advancements, such as big deep learning models, which are able to, uh, which require a lot of memory, but with recent advances in hardware and memory, it's possible to create such big uh, complex models. Um, so that is uh, one big thing that we have seen in the recent years. And the other recent thing that we have seen is being able to use machine learning across several disciplines, such as health, um, IoT, uh, smart cities, these are newer uh, applications of machine learning. But I think what is definitely lacking is creating models which are fair, which are interpretable. And I think that interpretability and fairness go like hand in hand. So if you can create interpretable models, models that actually combine, have meaningful combinations of features um, or data, uh, to put it um, uh, in an easier way, uh, meaningful combinations of data and um, therefore may being more interpretable, which would help us verify whether the models are fair, whether the models are transparent, and then make changes to them accordingly to make them fair, to make them transparent to the user and make them privacy aware. So all those things are possible only when we know what the model is doing and 
um, interpretability is a really big equation in this. So, and I think that the field is definitely progressing towards that, and we will see more of it in the next few years. So there is one um, project which uh, we wrote a grant for DTL, which got a travel award, that's why I'm here. So which is on uh, identifying uh, privacy leakages in um, personal assistant devices. So that project is on um, um, understanding data from personal assistants, so let's such as Google, <coughs> Home, Alexa, all these are really um, used for s short uh, lifestyle tasks such as navigation, maybe seeing whether a restaurant is open, checking the weather, um, smart home com controls, and um, um, going out on Friday nights for dinner, dinner options, or takeout options nearby, um, things like that. And these are way more revealing of a person's personal information, such as age, gender, um, location. It's a big thing that um, uh, is a focus. And um, all these things can be more revealed by using these short commands rather than big Google searches or search engine uh, usages that people have, because those are more targeted information when they want to gather more information on a certain subject. But this personal assistant commands are more lifestyle oriented, are for simple, small um, things that people want to search. And um, uh, the project involves being able to identify these personal information using these commands. How much personal information does these commands actually reveal? And we won't know until we actually apply machine learning to see what kind of commands and how they come together. For example, um, I can uh, buy a stroller and that could actually indicate that I have a kid. Um, or I could buy a uh, I could be a woman and I could buy something for a man or could get I'm married. Or um, music preferences, dietary preferences, uh, uh, like I'm a vegetarian or I like these foods. All these are nuanced information about a user, way, way beyond location or age or gender. And those um, could actually lead to much more um, privacy invasion than the user would like. And we saw in a talk today how vegetarianism or other dietary preferences, credit scores, all, all those things can be very, very damaging. And that um, uh, that's what I'm trying to do, whether these commands come together and reveal information. I think it's a really, really nice effort and very, very timely and very much needed indeed. Um, because um, data transparency is of a most importance and to the extent that there's a, there's a lot of data like a huge amount of data that's being collected uh, and most of it is collected without the user's knowledge in many many ways <laughs> and uh, also uh, most of the data is stored um, in places where they could be hacked um, and also uh, the data could be used by apps or other things uh, or even malicious ent entities if they get access to the data they would use it for uh, wrong purposes and um, should definitely be stopped and I think there are very lots of different dimensions to this data transparency and I think um, um, data transparency lab brings all these together in a nice way I think that uh, while all this data collected is very, very important. There's also a very significant side to the models, which um, I was talking about earlier, from the, the models and how they use data. And that is going to give us real insight into how to prevent this from happening. Mm -hmm.